I'll always remember the sound of my dad's body hitting the kitchen floor. A dense thud that shook the entire house, but represented our new normal. I was 14, and just two years before this, my dad had been diagnosed with multiple system atrophy. Uh, like most people, we knew nothing about it. It affects just 50,000 Americans, has no cure, and can kill you in five years. I watched my dad go from this to this. These pictures were taken four years apart. And from experience, I can tell you that nobody deserves to fight the battle that I have seen my dad fight. He moved into a nursing home close to a year ago. And it was temporary decision that became permanent. We realized that we could no longer address his medical concerns at home. And this broke my heart. As one of his primary caregivers, I felt guilty that I, in a sense, had failed him. As a family, we all felt that we had failed him. Despite all of this, he loved us nonetheless. Now, I drove out to see him often at the nursing home, but communication was difficult due to the faintness of his voice. I would sit next to him, do my homework while he watched TV, and over time, visits became simply an addition to my to-do list. Eat, sleep, exercise, check out colleges, apply for scholarships, pray, go to church, volunteer, maintain my sanity sometimes, <laughs> and visit my dad. Despite my love for him, I could not bear feeling awkward. He had defied every expectation set for him and defeated the odds numerous times. So I sat next to him, did my homework, watched TV, and waited for him to die. That all changed last summer. I can still hear the footsteps of nurses, his labored heaves, and the discussions of paramedics who were strapping him into a gurney. I can feel the pen in my hand that I used to sign his paperwork. I remember the panic in my mind and the lump in my throat when I picked up my phone, dialed my pastor's phone number, and said, you need to be here. When we got to the hospital, he was unresponsive in somewhat of a comatose stage and breathing on an external ventilator. When I saw this, I couldn't accept the fact that my dad was going to die that night. I cried into my mom's arms as I realized that the day I had dreaded for so long had finally come, had finally come. I felt humiliated that I had taken his presence for granted. We soon found out that uh, he was unconscious because he was in respiratory failure with pneumonia in both lungs starting to become septic, and one lung had entirely collapsed. It was, by all accounts, too late for him. Now, this is the part of my story where I tell you that my dad died that night, and I will never forgive myself for how I failed to appreciate his presence. I can tell you how I vow never to forget how temporary life can be, and that I now live my life as a tribute to the man my dad once was. All of these reflections would make for a fitting yet tragic end to my story, if my dad had died that night. But that didn't happen. My dad lived through that night. I think that it's fairly obvious today that we are obsessed with both sequence and finality. How our days, our weeks, our months, our years, even our lives begin and how they end. What's worse is that we live in a society today that pushes us forward so quickly that we forget to look back. The value of being, of merely existing and being yourself has plummeted while the importance of doing 
has shot upward. When we are afflicted by tragedy, our rhythm in life is disrupted by a lack of control. We choose not to deal with this and feel that we should just shy away from it. And why wouldn't we? When we're young, we learn to be resilient, flexible, and efficient. Through hardships, we must persevere, we must make progress, we must come out on the other side better than we were before. That's what society tells us. But sometimes we encounter a situation that is simply different. It does not fit into a 10 second Snapchat or a 140 character tweet or even a paragraph on Facebook. It overwhelms our senses to the point that we are unable to comprehend what is going on around us. And in these moments, we must immerse ourselves in the value of presence. Uh, Now imagine with me, if you will, and feel free to close your eyes, a loved one sitting directly in front of you. They cannot speak to you. They cannot hear you. They cannot move or interact with you. But they can look at you. Picture their face. Think of the shape of their brow, the bridge of their nose. Think about the color of their eyes and gaze into them deeply. In this moment, think about the compassion that you feel and at the same time, acknowledge the power that you have to make your loved one feel that same sense of compassion. I think that at the root of all relationships, there is a natural appreciation for presence that often goes unnoticed. And amidst chaos, I encourage you to embrace this. When we feel like everything is crashing down around us, focus on the people immediately next to you. Look at them, investigate them, invest yourself in them, and see what you find you may be surprised at what comfort this can bring you. Now, back to my dad. Uh, Today, he is still alive, about 30 minutes, if my picture will come up. Ah, there we go. He's still alive today, about 30 minutes from my home in Washington State. Now, even though I live here in St. Louis, 2,100 miles away, you can see that I still give him the closest shave possible. (laughs) And, you know, I used to take my dad for granted. Sweet smile, tender heart, perseverant spirit, gentle wisdom, and a unique yet often just terrible sense of humor. So bad. His his puns are awful. But now I see things differently. When I go to visit him at the nursing home, I see a gleam in his eyes. I hear a soothing guidance in his voice. And I feel both a warmth and a strength and a un- or an abundance of love in his grip, all of these I had not noticed before. I go back to that night in the hospital in my mind when his lips remained sealed, his eyes remained shut, and his body laid limp on a hospital stretcher. The doctor said, you are the obstacle. He is going to die. And I wonder what life would be like had he actually died that night. Today, I stand in front of you now with this beautiful picture of me and my dad, and I still ponder that question. Of course, he's alive now, but it is inevitable that one day he will die, and I will need to work through this with family, with friends, and personally. I contemplate this reality, I grieve over this reality, and I hope for the best possible outcome that is peaceful for him, my family, and our friends. Nevertheless, I smile. I smile because this man that I know up here behind me has encouraged me in so many ways. He has shaped me to be the man that I am today. And above all else, I stand here tonight intending to exude the love and character of the most amazing man I have ever had the privilege of knowing. My dad, thank you.